Happy November. Welcome to another Tune of the Month. Thanks for stopping by. I am stopping by here at home uh, for one day in between my travels. I just got back from Scotland and so I thought I would share with you today a Scottish tune because that fits. Um, I'm going to show you my very favorite Scottish jig. Um, this is a tune by the infamous Robert McIntosh, one of my very favorite Scottish composers. Um, it's called Miss Oswald of Arch and Truth's Favorite Reel. Yes, you heard that right. This is a jig called a reel. Um, Macintosh went through a little phase of doing this <laughs> in his writing of, of writing jigs and calling them reels. I never quite figured out why. If you figure out why, let me know. I'm sure there's a great story. He was kind of a trickster, so could have been that. But uh, it's a great tune if you just want to call it Miss Oswald of Arch and Truth's favorite. So people don't think that you don't know the difference between jigs and reels. You can do that. I do that. Here's the tune. <laughs> by as always and if you're learning grab your instrument this month I'm going to talk about jig bowing as related to style um, and this is one of the things I love I play a lot of different styles of jigs as you know if you followed tune of the month and probably you do too and they have a slightly different accent depending on what part of the world they come from Scottish jigs sound distinctly different from Irish jigs distinctly different from Cape Breton distinctly different from um, you know down East Canadian and so on down the list what is that difference and how do we do it? Well, I've cracked a little bit of the code in my own exploration. I thought I'd share it with you. It has to do with how you use your bow in the groups of three eighth notes, what I call the big littles. And when I say big, I'm talking about a big amount of bow and little, I'm talking about a little amount of bow. But first, let's learn the tune. You gotta have something to work with, right? This tune is in G major. And I'm sure you heard it's a lot of um, very chordal kind of scales and arpeggios. So if you've gotten good at labeling your scales and arpeggios, hanging out with Tune of the Month and other folks, you're in good shape. I'll slow down the A section. <laughs> that you already know about if you follow Tune of the Month there, so you know where to put them. They'll also be in the sheet music if you are subscribed to my email list. So, you probably hear this as part one with a turnaround, part two I call it, back to part one, and then an ending. Part one, hammer on. Hammer on. Right, so it has those two longer notes, and I'm going to do a hammer on a single grace from below getting into it. If you don't know what that is, check out previous Tune of the Month jig videos. I go over it in detail. Uh, again, part one. Part two, big long scale. Now coming down, I'm going to do a flap. And again, flap. So it's just 
up and down the scale, up is plain, coming down is a double flap. Here it is again, part two. down the scale. There's the ending again. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's put the whole A section together. I'll just do it once. Go ahead, rewind the video. I'm not going anywhere on your screen. <laughs> B section. you are sort of right. Um, Macintosh frequently would write a variation almost to his own tune instead of repeating the eight bars of the B section. It makes it a little more interesting. And actually, in fact, he would write it out with the A section, eight bars with a repeat sign. And the B section just was 16 bars. When you see my sheet music, email subscribers, it will look the same. But the good news is it means it's not all different. Let me show you how to think about this. It's still part one, part two, part one ending, right? So I start with this big G major arpeggio with a little roll. That's part one. All right, now the turnaround is these little scales. a big skip up and then just down the scale. He makes a lot of these shapes. Up, down, up, down. All right, so that's the first half of the B section, the first repeat of the B. I'll do the whole thing again. Part one, part two, part one, ending. And in fact, that's exactly what you're going to do, but you're just going to put Macintosh variations in. Here's the variation on part one. You see what he did there? Rather than just... He's just going to fill in that first dotted quarter. Part two as you know it. Now. Instead of going back to part one, you're going to do what I call a grand ending. Usually endings take two bars. Sometimes composers will make a grand ending of four bars, a little coda that happens only the last time of the beat. Here it is, bunch of scales. <laughs> but it's actually even a sequence. The first scale starts on your E note. Now start on the F sharp, and keep going up. That's it. So that very long B section is actually very short. All you gotta do is vary the first part one, and grand ending at the end. Here's the whole B section.
and that's the whole tune. So you can go back and practice it slowly with the recording and get it under your fingers, but what we all really came here for was to figure out what, what do we do to make this jig sound Scottish as opposed to Irish or Canadian or American or anything like that. So you may have noticed that when I slowed this jig down, unlike every other jig I have taught, I was keeping the rhythm very dotted, right? Usually when I slow down a jig, I slow it down this. And here I'm keeping the very heavy dotted rhythm, very snappy. And that is because on the spectrum of jig lilt, the Scottish jig is the most dotted jig that exists in the world. It's um, almost clicky in a way, um, and you would write it out rather than three even eighth notes and assume that you know to swing it. You would write it out dotted eighth, sixteenth, eighth. How I am doing that is by making sure that the lintels are very tiny. I do a very big, and now I'm going to use almost like a centimeter of a. You can probably see it, my bow distribution. Now, interesting phenomenon. The more bow I use on those littles, the less accented my jig rhythm will be. And I'll turn into another style of jig. So watch this, here's Scottish. and then this big, and then this big, and this, and to the point where they were almost as big as the bigs, I changed my jig accent and basically teleported to another style. The most heavily jig dotted is Scottish. Then comes usually the kind of a Canadian, down east Canadian sort of style, pretty heavy jig lilt, but very smooth still. Then comes Irish, uh, pretty even keeled, smooth jig. Then comes Cape Breton, which is almost even rhythm. If you listen to Cape Breton jiggers, um, it's almost straight. And then, of course, I didn't even go to the other end of the spectrum, which is straight eighth notes. Which is like how you play a classical G at a Bach or something like that. Pretty interesting phenomenon, and it's done entirely with bow distribution. So, that's a little tidbit I'm going to leave you with. And my challenge for you is to play this Scottish jig and as you play it, change your bow distribution to find what jig lilt you like. It'll sound a little like this. I'm going to play, I call this my, my tour de jig spectrum. I'll give you an example. I'm going to play the A section of this tune, Miss Oswald of Arch and Crew. And I'm going to start in Scotland. And as I go, I'm going to use more and more bow on my littles till I end up all the way in jig land. <laughs> pretty cool and it's a great thing to play with with all the jigs that you're learning. You can, uh, if you listen with this filter, you'll be able to pick up a lot more about what makes a style a style listening to the masters of any genre play their jigs. So take that little tool, go out, play with it, enjoy the rest of your fall. I will see you in December and I'm going to go catch a plane to Texas. Thanks for stopping by guys. Talk to you soon.